All right, guys, today um, we're going to look at that second um, example that we talked about on Newton's second law. So this is a Newton's second law example where we have an initial velocity, okay? So in this case, we have an air hockey puck, and it's initially traveling 1.5 meters per second in the east direction. And then we're going to put a force on it of 2 newtons. We're going to apply that force for 0.4 seconds. Um, and that force is going to be directed 30 degrees north of east. Okay, what is the velocity of the puck at the end of the 0.4 seconds? Well, guys, in, in that case, we know that our velocity in the x direction is going to get bigger because we have a force acting on it in the x direction. And the, the velocity in the y direction is going to get bigger because there's a force acting on it there. And if you have a force acting for a time, you're going to accelerate and your velocity should increase, right? Okay. Now, before, if we just had a stationary object and we had a force acting in that direction, we could just say F equals MA and solve. And that was really, really easy. But in this case, since we have an initial velocity in the X direction, we have to break it down into its components. So if we look here, we have the force in the X equals MAX, the force in the Y equals MAY. So we've broken our forces down here in a different color, so you can tell that one's a velocity and one's a force vector. My X force is going to be 1.7321 and then my y force is going to be 1 newtons. Okay? If we were to take this squared plus this squared square root, will we get 2 newtons? Okay? So we know how to we know how to deal with that. Guys, what ends up happening is that air hockey puck with that that 1.7321 newton force is going to accelerate at a pretty high rate. Okay? Um, and then in the y direction with the one newton force, it's going to accelerate at about 20 meters per second squared. Okay? Once we know the acceleration in the x direction, the acceleration in the y direction, it's a simple kinematics equation type problem to figure out how fast we're going in the x and how fast we're going in the y. So you'll notice in the x direction we had an initial velocity. In the y direction we do not. So when we plug these in, you'll notice we get Vx equals V dot x plus Axt. We have an initial velocity in the x direction, and we come up with a velocity in the x direction of 15.3567 meters per second. Okay? In the y direction, because we don't have an initial velocity, and we have an acceleration of 20, we come up with a velocity in the y direction going 8 meters per second. Okay. I'm hoping you guys are seeing the reason we have to break it into its x and its y is because of this initial velocity here. In our last unit, one of our biggest errors was we tried to put an acceleration of 9.8 on something that was moving in a constant velocity in the x direction. You guys remember this? And the only thing, in that case, the only time you'd be accelerating is um, in the y direction because that's where the force is pulling. Okay? Once we know these two, then we get um, the x velocity and the y velocity, then it just becomes a basic trig problem. So we come over here, we know our x velocity is going to be 15, our y is going to be 8, and then we just simply use the Pythagorean theorem to find the magnitude right there, 17.3156 meters per second. And then we use some um, trig to figure out the angle. We have opposite and adjacent, so we're going to use tangent. Once we use the inverse tangent, we come up with an angle of about 27.5179 degrees. Okay? Which then we plug here, and that's going to be going north of east. So the velocity of that puck after the 0.4 second contact is going to be... 17.3156 meters per second. Now, guys, does it make sense that it's not going to be 30 degrees? Well, if it was stationary when we started and we put the force on it, would it be moving off at 30 degrees? If it was stationary, right? But because it had an initial velocity in the x direction, uh, a wee 1.5 meters per second, this angle starts to become less than 30 degrees. Kind of logical, right? Okay. All right.
So guys, that is an um, example that will help you with your last problem in your homework where um, that duck, I think, is moving initially before it starts paddling its feet.